for me to discuss his extended leave. When I spoke to him about his extended leave, he explained to me that he's unhappy with his current treatment plan. He complained of side effects, including psoriasis. He stated that the medications are harmful to him. On further discussion, he reported that he is not mentally unwell, does not suffer from any psychotic illness, and therefore does not need to be on any antipsychotic medication. He has a glaring lack of insight into his illness. He explained to me that in his opinion, vitamin C is all that he needs to kill his mental health problems. He also spoke about his desire to apply for a review panel hearing. Uh, his intention was not to take any medications and to disengage from his treatment plan should he win his review panel. In terms of his mental state, he was clearly experiencing psychotic symptoms. He included bizarre beliefs and beliefs that the Canadian government was controlling people's minds. He spoke about psychiatry being a pseudoscience. He stated that the government controls the radio, TV, and the media in an effort to subjugate people. He spoke about CIA experiments where a chip was inserted into a bulldog in order to stop the bulldog from charging. He made other. A bull, a bull, a bull, not a bulldog. Dr. Jose Delgado. Can I object? I can't object to the lies. I feel not have an opportunity to speak to these uh, things that he said. But they're uh, half truths and uh, hearsay, you know? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you hear me? So, I'm sorry. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't interrupt the dog. Go ahead, please. Okay. He made other bizarre references which are not related to the subject matter. His personal hygiene was fairly appropriate. He maintained good eye contact. His insight into his illness was very poor. He was very reluctant to comply with meds. And he stated clearly he does not need to be on meds. So, my opinion is that I agree with Dr. Lazar's opinion that he does suffer from a senior injury mental illness. He has had numerous admissions to local hospitals in Vancouver during the season relapses. His med compliance has historically been very poor. Uh, in my opinion, he has very limited insight and he continues to question his diagnosis and the need for treatment with antipsychotic meds. In addition to his uh, ongoing psychosis, his lack of insight makes it very likely for him to disengage from his treatment should he be made a voluntary patient. When acutely unwell, he can become very disorganized, agitated in his behavior with threats and violence towards others. Being on extended leave allows us to manage his illness in a more assertive and comprehensive manner. It also allows us to better manage the associated risks in more. Both the risk to others and the risk to himself due to his extremely disorganized and chaotic behavior. Uh, I therefore request the panel to take the information into consideration and to not discharge him from his extended leave. Uh, Further information would be for me to read out Dr. Lazar's report. I'm going to be very quick. Dr. Lazar mentions that uh, Joseph is a single male uh, whose origins are from Croatia. He was referred to the ACT team for treatment and assessment of psychotic symptoms and substance use in the context of the level of aggression and hostility that made him unsafe to be treated by his former mental health team. Uh, Dr. Lazar mentions that there were significant problems during childhood when he was argumentative and had a lot of trouble during school. He frequently used to get into conflicts. His first psychiatric admission was around the age of 20 when he was using marijuana. And on the street drugs, he developed psychotic symptoms and was ultimately diagnosed as schizoaffective disorder with cannabis use. Since the time, he's had numerous admissions to Lionsgate and to Vancouver General Hospital. He has shown a strong tendency to focus on conspiracy theories, spending a lot of time researching the internet. His theories involve beliefs of secret societies, bankers, politicians, 9-11 and the apocalypse. They would often include organic nuts and dried fruits, typically not giving him a healthy diet. <laughs> uh, he's experienced periods of weight loss. He's shown a strong tendency to become agitated and hostile over perceived persecutions, which have included beliefs that airplanes fly overhead and were spraying chemicals on him in Vancouver. He also believed that he was being monitored through a computer 
these beliefs have resulted in great anger, including on one occasion when he, when he made a death threat to the mayor, Greg Robinson. There's been very little ability on Joseph's part to recognize that he has a mental illness or that he has any need for treatment. Although on some occasions he has accepted the idea that he may have bipolar disorder. More commonly, he believes that he has special powers. Uh, and, at a, and at times these may be grandiose, including him believing that he can channel people like Jesus, Gandhi, and read other people's minds. When he's deteriorated, this has seemed to involve medication non-compliance with increased marijuana use and sleep destruction. There's also noticed to be an increased rigidity to his diet, which is accompanied by weight loss, deteriorating personal hygiene, and increased dangerousness by way of making threats to family and others. Recently, he attempted to light a Portuguese church on fire, following uh, missing his medication for three days, and was experiencing heightened Delusional and paranoid thought content. Dr. Vata states that suicide actually is not a significant clinical presentation. Let's think through the past psychiatric history. He's been tried on numerous antipsychotic medications, including loxapine, clozapine, paliperidone, tropixol. He's also been tried on lithium and epidural. Uh, he has not been willing to take oral medications consistently, although this appears to have changed during a tertiary admission from fall 2017 to the spring of 2018. He was also treated at Northeast Mental Health Team between 2006 and 2015. But this became untenable when he threw a phone and computer and made threats of violence towards his student psychiatrist. He's been to Venture and has been treated through the assertive outreach team. Briefly, uh, substance use has been a chronic factor with extensive marijuana consumption. In the past, he's also had involvement with alcohol and cocaine. Summarizing his hospital admissions, he's had three hospitalizations in 2001, one in 2002, three in 2003, one in 2004, one in 2008, two in 2010, two in 11, three in 2013, one in 2014, one in 2016. Uh, these are most typically psychotic symptoms were treated voluntarily in 2016 and refused to take oral meds with sufficient consistency to maintain his health. The next two paragraphs, I think, focus on risk of both self-neglect and violence towards others. On August 17, 2017, he was recalled on extended leave due to decompensation and hospitalized. He had become angry, agitated in response to delusional beliefs. He was preoccupied with the belief that he needed to go and see singer Nelly Putado to cure her in Montreal. He sold a chair to fund for a flight. 